In this video, coming to you from my weird little underneath the basement stairs airbrush room, I'm going to show you how I keep my airbrush clean. It's never been clogged. So welcome to my airbrush room. It's a old coal bin. Our house is about 100 years old, and this is where they used to put the coal, and that's how you used to keep the house warm. Uh, now it's where I shoot particles of uh, paint onto models of little tiny people, sometimes buildings, all kinds of different stuff like that. And I've had a lot of people over the years ask me a lot of questions about how to keep their airbrush clean. A lot of people say, I don't like using my airbrush because it's such a hassle to clean, or I don't like using my airbrush because it seems to always be clogged. And I've been asked the question a bunch of times, and I've got this room a little bit more dialed in, and I've got some tech kind of figured out a little bit better now here, so I figured I would make a video and tell you how I do it. The first tip is probably going to sound a little dumb, but uh, don't put too much paint into the cup on your paint, uh, your, your airbrush. The reason for that is, is because it's always easier to add more paint to finish whatever you're working on than it is to have too much paint and then have to try to either A, figure out how to get it out and back into the little bottle, which is real difficult in many situations, or just throw the paint away, which is also not fun. So it's always better to err on the side of caution and put less paint in there than you think you might, and then as you get a little bit closer and you're about to run out, you can put a couple more drops in and just kind of keep going that way. Once you've decided it is now time for me to clean my airbrush, whether it is you are you know, transferring to a different color that you're going to start working on, or you are done for the day and you're going to be putting the airbrush away, at that point, the first thing I reach for is airbrush cleaner. Now, a lot of people have told me over the years the things that they use to clean their airbrush. I've heard Windex, I've heard isopropyl alcohol, I've heard just straight water, all those kind of things. I like to use airbrush cleaner that I get from online. I think this is maybe Iowata brand or yeah, it says Iowata on the back and I use an Iowata airbrush. And I'm not super brand loyal, but when I'm trying to figure out how to like completely be sure that I keep a thing clean very frequently, I try to go, well, I'll use the product that they suggest. And since their name's on it, I figure, yeah, that's good. So what I do is the first thing is I squirt a bunch of it into the cup um, and I let it sit for a bit, right? And kind of be sloshed around a little bit. And then the most important thing to do is the back pressure. You take your finger and you put it onto the front of the airbrush. Uh, now you probably have to have the little guide thing on the front, so otherwise you're going to poke yourself with the needle. I always make sure to have that extra little cup on the front. But you put your finger on there and then you actually fire air through it. And what happens is, and you pull back as well, and what happens is the back pressure makes bubbles in the cup. Kind of like um, when you were a kid and you used to blow into your bubbles into the chocolate milk with the straw. It's like that. And what that's doing is it's causing the fluid that's inside, that's trying to be shot out, to actually kind of cycle back inside and it helps to clean things out. You do it for, you know, two, three, maybe four second burst, kind of do it a couple of times. And then at that point, I like to find some old uh, bottle of whatever kind and I just shoot the paint into it. I put the nozzle all the way in there and I shoot the paint into it and I just keep doing it and I then will maybe even back pressure again and then shoot the rest of it. Now, you can, depending on how much you put in, you can shoot all of it through the airbrush until you're empty, or you could pour it out, uh, something like that. At that point, the stuff is going to be um, contaminated, so you're not gonna necessarily wanna pour it back into your bottle of cleaner because it'll contaminate your cleaner. Once you've done that, the next step is to get a little bit of water. At this point, I'm just basically doing the exact same thing I did with the cleaner, but I'm using some water. I got this wash bottle. That's what they're called, wash bottles. I got this on Amazon, and it's just you squeeze it. It's kind of a very soft side. You squeeze it and squirt it on there. Keep it on a shelf nearby. It's much easier. But you basically squirt that stuff back in there and do the exact same thing again. The back pressure and then squirt, 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 the back pressure, it, the, the back and forth. If you just do one thing and hold it forever, I don't feel like it's shaking up the paint as much. So, you know, firing it, letting it go, firing it, letting it go, that kind of stuff kind of shakes out any other paint that might be inside. But you first want to do the cleaner, whatever kind of cleaner you might like. If you don't use like normal airbrush cleaner or something like that, put in the comments below what it is you do use. Um, I know isopropyl alcohol these days is real expensive, but I know some people still like to use it. So. You do the cleaner, then you do the exact same thing with the wash, and then at that point, um, there's just basically one more step before you start taking it apart. If there is any paint left in the actual cup itself, I take a piece of paper towel and my finger, and I put it in there, and I, I just spin it around, and I just keep doing that to get as much of it out of there as possible. 
I've seen so many cups over the years that are clean generally, but they're also coated on the inside with paint. And I just think it's just one more. It takes 10 seconds. You just put that piece of paper towel in there, you wipe it around a little bit, and then you get the last of it out of the cup. And then at that point, it is now time for you to start taking it apart. Remember to turn off your compressor before you start taking it apart. Otherwise, it, well, you'll be startled by all of the air. Now that you've turned off the compressor, you've basically kind of cleaned the brush to some degree and you've taken the hose off the bottom of the brush, it's now time to take it apart. Now, many people will have a handle part, a cover that goes over the needle back here on the back. I haven't used that part on my airbrush in years. I don't really know where it is, so it's okay. Um, first thing you do is you get rid of the, the nut off of the back. Most airbrushes kind of work roughly the same way. The pieces might look a little bit different, but not too bad. But you do that and then you remove the needle. Now, don't bend the needle. Don't poke anything with the needle. Just try to be very careful with the tip of the needle. It is one of the most important parts of the entire airbrush. I like to kind of dip it in some water, and I will dip it into the um, thing that I keep my airbrush in. I'll show you that in a little while. I dip it in there just a little bit, and then I, because there's still going to be a little bit of paint on there, and then again, I take a piece of paper towel, and I just kind of pull it through the piece of paper towel, and, and then I set it aside someplace very carefully. After that, I take the rest of the airbrush apart. Now, there's only a few parts on the airbrush that actually can get paint on them. So you don't need to put all of the parts into whatever you're going to put them into, which I'll explain in a second. So the main spring-loaded doohickey, you can take that, set it aside. The trigger probably pops off. You can take that and set it aside. And now you have just mainly a couple of pieces, three pieces left. You have the main body of the airbrush and then a couple of nozzles in the front. Sometimes there's a separate cone, sometimes there's not. What you want to do is take all these parts apart. Very frequently, you're going to have a little tiny wrench that you're going to use, and you're going to unscrew everything. And then you take all of these parts, and you put them into fluid. Now, I generally put them into water, just plain old tap water. I used to use distilled water, but distilled water after a while can sometimes get sort of weird grunge in there. It doesn't have the stuff that's in normal tap water. And so because of that, things can kind of grow in there, whereas tap water's got like chlorine and stuff in it, which is less likely to, to grow. Now, the thing about tap water, though, is if you let the level inside your container, whatever you use, if you let that level uh, evaporate down, it will start to put mineral deposits upon your actual uh, you know, pieces of metal, which will be a bit of a bummer and a bit hard to get off. Unless... I've never seen an airbrush that wasn't made out of brass or something like that. You should not have to worry about rust. It's not a situation with your airbrush. So um, the most important thing is to take the parts apart and then put it into some sort of fluid. Now, I've seen people put it into a glass of water. I've seen people put them into um, like a plastic, like a, you know, like a Tupperware or something like Rubbermaid tub, something like that. I generally put it into an, uh, an ultrasonic cleaner. I got the ultrasonic cleaner for cheap over on Amazon. I'll put a link below. Um, and that will hold at least two of my airbrushes. And then not only that, but also I'll hit the button to turn it on and it will do the ultrasonic thing. And it will help to break up any other paint that I might have missed in the previous steps. The most important thing about never getting a clog in your airbrush is that your airbrush should never be completely dry, specifically in between sessions. When you are not painting, your airbrush should be submerged, and then you will never, ever get a clog in your airbrush. Keeping the airbrush wet when not in use is kind of the pro strat for keeping the airbrush clean and clear. I have never purchased one of those little tool kits where you put the little kind of pipe cleaners through and all that kind of stuff because I've never needed it. Keep your airbrush wet Whenever you're not using it, keep it in a cup of water, little Tupperware thing, ultrasonic cleaner if you want to get fancy. And then from then on, you don't have to worry about it. And when it's time to decide to start airbrushing again, you just open that container up or whatever. Uh, if, it's, if it's like a Tupperware thing with a lid, that might help also with like evaporation. And it kind of helps with the um, ultrasonic cleaner as well. But if you take that and then, um, you know, you, it's time to start airbrushing. You just take that thing and start, you know, put it all back together again and just fire out the water that was inside of it once you get all hooked up to the hose. You're not going to have any problems. It's not going to be clogged. And then you'll be able to have a great time doing airbrushing. You'll be more likely to want to airbrush because your airbrush is clean. And then from that point, you can just go on and then completely, you know, reverse the product, the, the, the situation again, and then go back and put it all back to, into the water once you've cleaned it all out. And doing that extra little stuff and just getting 
it to be a, a habit that you do will make it so that your airbrush never lets you down and always makes you uh, want to use it. And then you'll be able to do a lot of really cool things and hopefully crank out more models. If, if, if this helped at all, I'd like you, if you could, you know, to click the little like down below uh, or subscribe if you haven't. And um, I'm going to keep making more videos now that I've got a bit of a setup here in the uh, airbrush room. So you'll be seeing those as well too. And I've also got a playlist about airbrushing in general, Pachow, and you can check that out as well to learn kind of beginner stuff on how to airbrush.